It's 6 a.m. and a gigantic city within a city is gearing up for a new day. This is Southampton Docks, an entry point for millions of tons of goods we consume from the Far East every year. If something was made in China, there's a good chance it was landed here. The vast majority of all goods imported into the UK arrive on container ships, and I bagged a berth on this tiny pilot boat to come out and see the biggest of them all a true monster of the seas. I'm about to board the Marco Polo, the largest container vessel in the world, en route from China. At nearly 400 meters, she's longer than 100 family cars parked end to end, and weighs in at more than 175,000 tons. This is just the most awesome vessel. I mean, standing here on the bridge, it looks big enough, but then you swing around and see all these containers behind the bridge. There are 16,000 on board, carrying everything from TVs to clothes to power tools. Overall command stays with the captain, but by now he's handed over to the two Southampton pilots who boarded with me. Their knowledge of the Solent keeps her clear of traffic and stops her running aground. Steady on three, two, five, please. Three, two, five. From the South China Sea to the English Channel, the Marco Polo has already negotiated some of the world's busiest shipping lanes. But the Solent and the approach to Southampton docks are among the trickiest stretches of water anywhere because of busy traffic, tight turns and narrow channels. Do you still get nerves every time you do that kind of dog leg and the turn into the, to yeah, the water? Yeah, the pulse rate goes up every time because if every time you do a turn, something is different. Even if it's the same ship, something will be different and it won't happen in exactly the same way as last time. Probably shouldn't ask while we're still doing it, but do you think of the millions and millions of pounds of cargo aboard when you're doing this? I do try not to. <laughs> um, it's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, thanks. Uh, don't, don't remind me. <laughs> It's only as she nears her berth that you really get a feel for the giant scale of this ship. She's gently coaxed to the quayside, finally edging in a few centimetres at a time. And once she's come to a stop, there's no hanging around. In terms of global trade, time is money, and Marco Polo only has 24 hours here before setting sail again. So, no sooner has the ship been safely docked, you can hear the bells, the cranes are moving in, and its cargo is going to be unloaded. From the air, this place looks like a giant children's playset. There are thousands of containers stacked up like building blocks and towering over everything, a small army of giant cranes. Surely not all these containers come off, do they? No, on something like this, we're going to have around about 2,500 containers off of this vessel. Each container has a unique number, and that tells us all about it. And we need to know the weight, port of origin, final destination, and all those things. We use that to stack the containers in the right place, making sure every container is put exactly where it needs to go. Southampton handles more than a million of these containers every year, most coming into the country, but some heading out. The Marco Polo travels on a continuous loop between the Far East and Europe, calling it 17 different ports in a 77-day cycle. Next stop is Hamburg. Once customs are happy, these containers are on their way to destinations across the UK. An average of 22 container trains leave here every day, along with a huge fleet of trucks. Later this year, the Marco Polo will lose her title as the world's largest container ship to an even bigger vessel currently being built in South Korea. She'll be able to carry a whopping 18,000 containers. So this place is going to have to make a few changes to keep up. At least 20 more super ships like the Marco Polo are being built to ply the lucrative Asia to Europe trade route. So Southampton is splashing out £150 million so the port can compete for new business. It'll mean investing in deeper docks and even bigger cranes. And finally, this is where many of the containers off the Marco Polo get loaded up to be distributed across the UK. So all those televisions and phones and clothes and power tools and fridges, even that sofa he ordered six weeks ago, they'll soon all be on a high street near you.